Pelly, who's just coming in front of us now. And it's just back to the end again. Yeah, I mean, I um, I fell in love with this story and I fell in love with the arc. And for me, I think when I look at creating something, it's always the question of what I've done and what I have yet not done and what I would like to try out. And this character was so riddled with trauma and with anxiety. And, you know, all of this was sedimented down so that all she could manage was handiwork, literally physical. Um, yeah, it was just a given. I think there's so much to take from this show when it comes to, I love the idea of what happens to the world if we at this second have to go underground. The recycling, the uh, hierarchical settings within an environment, the fact that do we need order? Can we be completely free and liberal? What do we need to be able to create a structure the brutality of human survival instinct. And then you have the rebels who will never sort of follow the state, always question the status quo. Um, and this happens. And it, all of this set an environment with basically murder mystery. I mean, it's just, it's all there. I think that's the message of most entertainment, is how do you get people uh, through a story to feel an emotion together? Whether it's uh, sadness, or uh, whether it's laughter, or whether it's a common fear that we can all work through a problem with, or if it's a common anger that we can, be, we can see a story and get angry about something. Absolutely essential for mankind to gather in groups together, not virtually, but actually. Uh, it's been that way forever. Well, the reason I wanted to do this was because it did resonate so much with me. It was so relevant. Uh, what it was talking about was so relevant to what our world is now. Um, and the book, by the way, was written years ago. It's even more relevant now than it, when it was written. Silo is a show that's really, it's really uh, um, kind of a murder mystery in its own sense, but it's, it takes place hundreds of years from now, and it's a real good examination on human life and who we are as human beings because in the silo we've been stripped of history so people don't know what happened in the past. So it's no racism, it's no sexism, um, but it is classism. And, and what you're dealing with in the silo is all the things that you've been told you have to live by. And there's some people, just like people on the planet Earth, that question what the powers that be say is true. Um, 
but within that, it's this murder mystery that goes on in our first season. Um, and it's, it's a really great show. I'm just, I'm grateful to be here. Yeah, and I just, you know, one other moment that I really loved and really appreciated was when we rapped. Um, when, when, I, when I finished my season and they rapped me, I really got emotional because I really felt connected to our crew. I got to know them so well. I got to know our team um, and just our cast. And I did a freestyle for them, so it was fun. I just thought, how do we imagine such a situation and remain human? And, um, and it sort of felt apocalyptic, but it also felt very contemporary because we're not wearing sort of Star Trek costumes. We're, we're relatable in the way we look. And there was something about that that I found fascinating. And also just, it, it happened, we started doing it just shortly after lockdown and all that and in the pandemic. And, you know, it felt a bit like that because it was like, these shocks to the Earth system and humanity do happen, and you felt, oh, actually, it's not a million miles from. Uh, so it could be seen as sort of a bit frightening, but at the same time, I felt it had this this kind of basic message that we will form relationships, and we will question our environment, and we will um, push ourselves forward, whatever the situation. And I thought that's kind of a good uh, that's a good message. Yeah, my character in the books is a man and, you know, God bless the writers for changing her to a woman and gave me a great chance. Um, she's, um, she's basically in the mechanics area. She's, a, the, she's one of the workers, if you like. She's the, the ground base that sort of sustains and keeps the whole silo going. But she's got a past. She wasn't always in the down deep. And she's married, or was married, to a woman who's higher up in the ranks, and she's come down deliberately, so we don't know why. And she's also not left her workshop for 25 years, we don't know why. She's a kind of agoraphobic. And her main contact with the outside world is Juliet, who she's known since she was a 13-year-old girl, came to her to learn the trade and, and sort of became better than her. Silo is, what if we were all underground and we were told we could never go back outside? Uh, I got a wonderful script and then I called my agents and I said, let's get Graham on the phone. I really want to be a part of it and, and that's how it happened. And then I, you know, I did an audition and they, they liked me enough to say, yeah, come on. I, I think for me, you know, um, Good sci-fi always kind of makes you wonder about the world that we're living in right now. And so the, the way that truth is handled in this society I thought was really interesting. And, and then, you know, I found Lucas a really charming and, and sort of kind and open-hearted character, which maybe I'm not all those things, so I, I wanted to give him a shot. It's a, it's a real gift as an actor because you know that you get to tell the best story with sort of the best people and, and everybody's going to really do an amazing job. And, you know, Common is a legend and Tim and Rebecca and, you know, Chanaz is going to be a legend. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. This show is thrilling, exciting, fun. Dude, I got to work with Rebecca so much. We did so many intense scenes. It's always a pleasure working with her, so I love that. Yeah. The whole cast is amazing, so it's great. Yes. And you're working with, like, heroes and people you really respect. It's a real gift, so it's awesome. You know, Rebecca's relentless. They're all, like, they, 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 won't, they will give anything to make the scene the best it can be. So it's like... You never stop, you always keep searching, which also lines up with the show, so. I mean, the set is one of the greatest artistic achievements I've ever seen in my life. As an actor, it's a complete gift. It does so much work for you. You can really just breathe in the space. I mean, I'm not sure if I'll work on something as beautiful as that ever again in my life, so I'm just trying to take it in and enjoy it.
Uh, it started with a simple idea that we're living through our screens. Can we trust them? And it just developed into this series of mysteries. And the beauty of this show is that we slowly uh, unravel them one at a time. And whatever you think the truth is, uh, you're probably wrong. People have loved the books because uh, it's an amazing character, Juliet, who Rebecca absolutely nails. And it's uh, an intriguing world. And I think it's um, a little ahead of its time when it was written. And now it's found its time as it comes out now. She's, uh, Rebecca's been incredible. Uh, having her as an executive producer meant that she got to have like a lot of feedback, really delve into her character, have creative ideas. And her uh, inspiration on the set just went all the way down the call sheet. Like everyone had to live up to her uh, standard of craft and her treatment of everyone on the set. She's been a dream. Uh, this show would not be the same without her. Honestly, it's just a great mystery story. And it's set in this interesting world that you understand but is different. And it, I think, really pulls you in. And a big part of it has to do with, with that woman. Um, getting Rebecca to play Juliet was the big coup of the show. So um, it's so much fun to work with her and, and Tim. And it's been pretty great. You know, from... Uh, from the first episode, there's a, something that happens with the sheriff's wife, Allison, and she reveals something. And to me, that was the moment. It's like, now we're in the show. Now we're, now we're going. I mean, the, the pilot starts with a couple who just wants to have ch children. You know, they, 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 uh, time is running out, and she just wants, you know, this is her last chance to be pregnant, and it's, a, it's such a human and such a relatable way to start it off. And then you fall into the rabbit hole, and you start to scratch the surface. You're finding out there's so many things, so many that doesn't make sense here. There's something that's wrong, and, and uh, there, there's somebody, somebody's not telling the truth. These are people who actually are happy. When you start off, it's like, maybe this is not a bad place to live. It's a unique mystery show. It's a sci-fi show that, that is unlike anything you've uh, seen or heard about. And it's a show that deals with you know, what it means to be human. What's the important things about being human? And what is the things we need to, to thrive and, uh, and prosper?